1995 Murray State University racer football season will be one that lives in the memories of its fans forever. But the road to success is never an easy one. That is why when Houston Nutt was hired three years earlier, he laid down the plans for the type of players needed to make a championship caliber team. Uh, the first thing is players. First thing always, you start with the family, work inside out. Um, I can't wait to meet with them at 7 o'clock tonight. Got butterflies, and uh, that's where we're going to start right there. Then I'm going to need the seniors. I'm going to need the seniors. How many there is? 8, 10, 12, whatever. That senior has got to be the leaders. They're the ones that are going to have to show us the way. Then I want the juniors to look to the seniors, sophomores, juniors. I want to go all the way down the line. And uh, I'm going to start right there. I want to make sure academically that we're doing what's right. They're going to learn the definition of class. They're going to, want, they're going to learn one thing tonight. They're going to learn the word class. Now, class means a lot of things to a lot of people. But class, the way they're going to learn that word tonight is this. Class means doing what's right when no one's looking. Three years later, as he watched the team warm up for its first game of the year against Western Kentucky, he could see in his players' eyes that this was a breakthrough and the Hilltoppers would be its first test. The battle for the Red Belt has been a fierce one throughout the years, and this one would be no different. On their first possession, the racers would set the tone for the rest of the season when Mike Cherry hit Derek Cullors in the end zone for what would become the first of many racer touchdowns. The defense would also set a season-long precedent by attacking Western's running game and holding the Hilltoppers scoreless throughout the first half. In the third quarter, when Cherry hit Jesse Jones in double coverage, everyone present knew that this team and this game were no fluke. Split backfield with Mike Cherry again at the helm. Two-step drop, fake short, now drops back deeper and throws long. In the double coverage, it could be picked off, and it's caught, and it's into the end! Jesse Jones in double coverage somehow came away with the ball and it's a touchdown racer. Unbelievable. With the red belt back in their possession, Murray State was off to their next opponents. The Salukis of Southern Illinois were the next team to find out about the big scoring and hard hitting racers. On a dry overcast day, the Murray defense would make the biggest play of the day. With time running out in the first half and Murray up by four points, Southern Illinois was driving toward the end zone for what could have been a momentum-changing score. The Salukis have the football. Kennedy under center, second and goal from the seven for SIU. The racer defense realigns. Kennedy rolls to the right side. He looks into the end zone, he fires, and it's picked off! Renardo Hampton stepped in front of the intended receiver and picked it off. He's down there for a touchback, but the racers stop SIU inside the 10-yard line, and they take over as Hampton comes to the sideline and celebrates. Ronaldo Hampton's interception allowed the racers to come out in the second half and dominate the Salukis with their high-octane offense. Murray's first home game had them facing the always tough Indians of Southeast Missouri. Again, it was the defense that sent a resounding message through the Ohio Valley Conference by holding a potent SEMO offense scoreless throughout the entire game. The Indians driving right now, but in the wrong direction. Kennedy stands under center, drops back. Here comes Vaughn, and he levels him. Chris Vaughn shot through the right side of the line and leveled Kennedy, and he still hasn't gotten up. Wow, what a play by the freshman. On the offensive side of the ball, the name Derek Colors was one that opponents were learning to dread. Behind a wall of linemen, Colors rushed for 252 yards and three touchdowns. Cherry stands under center, bark signals both ways, has the ball. Hands it on the draw to Colors, right up the middle for a lot of yardage, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and taken down just shy. No, it's a touchdown, a late ruling, but they give the Racers a touchdown at the last moment. I think the officials are suffered from brain cramps a couple of times tonight. <laughs> I don't know. It took them so long to figure out if it was a touchdown. That was the strange part. Tough to tell here, but the racers are into the end zone as Derek Cullors 
with a big run, gives Murray a 20 to nothing lead. On September 23rd, the racers faced their biggest challenge of the season so far. Murray State had not beaten Middle Tennessee since 1986 and hadn't won in Murfreesboro since 1979. For too many years, they had let the large M on Middle's helmets intimidate them, but this year would be different. In the first quarter, Murray wrestled away a middle fumble and scored in four plays. That, coupled with the bone-crushing hits by the MSU defense, soon silenced the Blue Raiders' faithful. In fact, the Murray defense was so dominating that Middle Tennessee didn't even achieve a first down until the third quarter and never got past their own 50-yard line. William Hampton had the honor of putting the final touch on this game when he returned a middle punt 50 yards for a touchdown. Here's the boot. Thomas gets it away. A low punt this time, and Hampton takes it at midfield. Across the 45, 40, big hole. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Murray State. William Hampton takes it back 50 yards. And the racers lead 30 to nothing on the 50-yard punt return for a touchdown by William Hampton. Almost everyone thought after the big win at Murfreesboro, the racers would have an emotional letdown. And in fact, Murray's defense was not as dominating against Austin P as it had been the week before. But the racers' offense showed no signs of slowing. They go with the split backfield this time, shifted off to the right side. Austin P showing stunt from the corner this time. Two-step drop by Cherry, throws to our colors, and it's a touchdown. Colors was all alone in the corner, and he takes it into the right corner of the end zone for a touchdown, and the racers are on the board with 6.16 left in the first quarter. Murray State pulled out all the stops against the Governors, and when it was most important, the defense held its ground. Returning to the friendly confines of Stewart Stadium the following week, it was a welcome relief to the road-weary racers and the over 10,000 Murray State fans were also glad to have the team home again. The Skyhawks of Tennessee Martin, unfortunately, were not as happy. Leading the conference in passing, the Skyhawks were quickly shut down with five interceptions, including William Hampton's first quarter pick. McCrone, the quarterback, with hammer again from shotgun. McCrone looks for help. He throws. It's picked off by Hampton. He has a clean shot to the end zone. 15. And while the defense shut down the airway, the offense continued its juggernaut roll through another opponent. Homecoming 1995 saw the crowning of a new queen and the annihilation of Moorhead State. This was a game for the offense to shine, and in particular, Derek Cullors, who slashed through the Moorhead defense for 196 yards and six touchdowns, setting a new school and OVC record for touchdowns in a single game, as well as tying the NCAA record. From the eye, Colors and McCann behind Mike Cherry. Murray already up, 14 to nothing. McCann in motion to the left side. It's the toss to Colors. He has a hole across the 50, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Derek Colors. 52 yards for Derek Colors, and it's 20 to nothing, Murray State. And we're just five and a half minutes into this football game. Defensively, Rule Shepard showed he could score two when he intercepted a first quarter pass. The eighth game of this amazing season saw Murray back on the road as they traveled to Cookville, Tennessee to take on the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. While there were many plays on both sides of the ball, the one play that very well may epitomize the entire season happened with time running out in the first half. Two-step drop, fake short, goes long, intended for Swinton, and he caught it, and he scored! It's unbelievable! Somehow Swinton caught it in double coverage, it's a five, and he walks into the end zone, and it's a touchdown as time expires. What a play by Reginald Swinton! Holy cow, what a play. With their eighth straight victory in a row under their belts, 
the racers could start concentrating on the game that had been on the minds and lips of their fans since the blowout against Middle Tennessee. The Colonels of Eastern Kentucky had dominated the OVC for over a decade, and coming into Murray ranked number four in the nation, and with a six and one record, stood as the only hurdle to a Murray State OVC championship. In what could only be described as a battle of titans, the teams fought it out in front of a partisan crowd of over 15,000 faithful racer fans. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that Murray State was able to pull away, and even then, it took a Ronnie Merritt interception to seal the game. Eastern Kentucky with the ball, it could be a last gasp for them. Luganville in shotgun, takes the snap, fires across the middle, and it's picked off by Ronnie Merritt. That might just do it for the racers if they can hang on the final few minutes. They may have defeated Eastern Kentucky. The victory sent the home crowd into ecstasy as the goalposts were torn down and Coach Nutt and his staff received a congratulatory Gatorade shower. Not only had Murray State won at least a tie for the OBC championship, they had also received an automatic bid to the NCAA playoffs, their first since 1986. But the racers were not going to settle for being co-champions, so the next week they traveled to a cold and wet Nashville to take on the Tigers of Tennessee State to win the title outright. In what could only be called horrendous conditions, Murray slugged it out with TSU. The Tigers played much tougher than their record would have suggested, but in the end, they too succumbed. Racers trying to get them lined up. Mike Terry with some problems on the receivers. He has triplets to the right and saw something he didn't like. They send Swinton in motion to the left side. Colors the lone setback. Play action fake. Across the middle, they have Stevens. He catches it. It's a touchdown. It was tipped, but Stevens kept his eye on the ball and hauled it in, and the racers get the touchdown after all. The final game of the regular season had the racers ready to settle one more score. The year before, Western Illinois had embarrassed Murray on their home fields, and Coach Nutt had made sure each player remembered the final score. So, when the Leathernecks traveled to Murray, it was payback time. From the eye, Benji Bona is in, hands off to McCann at the five, and he drives on into the end zone. Unbelievable! Dave McCann with another touchdown. His fourth of the day. He has touched the ball five times and has four touchdowns. When the final whistle blew, the racers had not only avenged last year's game, they also had something no other Murray State team had ever had. 11 straight victories in an undefeated season. On the following Saturday, the racers hosted the first round of the NCAA Division I AA playoffs. Murray had not hosted a playoff game since 1979, and racer fans were eager for some postseason action. The Panthers of Northern Iowa had a high-scoring offense and an attacking defense, much like the racers, and when they took the field, it was like two heavyweights slugging it out. It was a battle all afternoon, as one team would score, the other would answer. McCann and Colors in the eye behind Mike Carey, third in goal from the two. They fake the handoff, Carey still has it, rolls to the right, he looks, he keeps, he dives. He's in there for a touchdown. Mike Carey keeps it himself on the naked bootleg, roll to the right, was looking for an open receiver, couldn't find him, and dived across the goal line for the touchdown. It could see the racers tie the game. The fact that Murray State was not able to advance to the next round of the playoffs did not in any way detract from their amazing season. In 1995, Murray State's players and team broke 28 school records and set new standards in 10 Ohio Valley Conference records. Other coaches around the league also recognized Murray as 17 racers were elected to the All-OVC team, with Derek Cullors taking OVC Offensive Player of the Year and William Hampton earning OVC Defensive Player of the Year. Hampton and Colors also received attention outside the league as both were named All-Americans. Coach Houston Nutt, who just three years earlier had laid down the blueprints for this winning season, 
was honored as OVC Coach of the Year and took home the prestigious Eddie Robinson Award as the National 1AA Coach of the Year. Finally, 17 seniors said their final farewells. These players had no idea four years ago that their last season would go down in the annals of time as the greatest Murray State team there ever was. And Murray State fans will remember this too as a season when the Phoenix had risen and cast off the shackles of the past. These were more than a collection of men battling every Saturday on the gridiron. They were family. They were teammates. They were champions. <laughs>